Hi, Lisa. Nice to see you back from your trip. So, first thing, uh, how about a cup of tea? Or is it coffee? Uh, where are the children? Oh, well, Mrs Musgrove has taken Harry out for a walk and Emma's asleep. No sign of Katrina. I'm afraid she's gone for good. You don't think she told Marcus Shadwick, do you? No. She'd be standing outside with an axe to welcome you if she knew. Katrina was so angry, blaming me for... for losing Jason. There's bound to be bitterness when things like this happen. I want to see Emma. Thanks for putting yourself out to help your ex-family. I'm taking care of things so you can go. And now you're back on dry land, why don't you get some batteries for your lady shave? <laughs> I'll be around long enough for you to get used to it. You were never very good in the taking the hint department. Always better than you in the subtlety department, though. You don't deserve subtleties. So my next phrase ends in off. I'm not going anywhere. We'll see. How many of these are you going to need? That'll be enough. Oh, use it off your head, you know. Why? Josh deserves it. And anyway, it's only to defend ourselves. Yeah, but isn't petrol bombs going a bit too far? You might be right, you know. Once I made this rocket, <sighs> it hit a lorry. I crashed into our house. Look, are you two bottling it or what? No. Hey, hey. I'm going down the supermarket. I can use be trusted to be left on your own for an hour. Yeah, no probs. Change your tune, haven't you? Well, isn't that what you wanted, Dad? Yeah, well, as long as you mean it. You got a petrol leak there? Oh. Oh, <laughs> I don't have a juice to the night not to get a fuel can. Must have spilled some somewhere. I want to get it cleaned up, that stinks. Yeah, you, Lisa. So, yeah. Well, they've made a good job of this place, haven't they? Never mind about that. This plan of yours is off its end. Well, have you got any other suggestions? I love it. It's Callum Finnegan we're talking about. Dad, I've thought about it and there's no other way. This, this kind of thing needs James Bond. Not Austin Powers. Well, you said yourself, the simple plans are best. No, it'll take more than this to trap that madman. Give me time and I'll come up with some other way. Well, you better had, cos Rose will be here soon and Callum's gonna show. Yeah, I'll leave those rates. I'm all right. Just hang on a minute, will you? Um, was a crate of vodka short there, mate? Oh, sorry. Why can't I take this in? Cos I don't want you straining yourself. I know I'm around a member of staff and that's sexual harassment. I think that was a kick. Yeah, I told you. Come on, sit down. No, I don't need to. Look, them kicks used to take out Jackie's breath away. Yeah, well, I'm not at that stage yet. This just feels nice and fluttery. Uh, Doc, you get a minute, please? Mike, it's Saturday. Morning. Um, she's having a bit of pain. It might be kicks. Yeah, she's pregnant, and? Um, well, she shouldn't be lifting anything at this stage, should she? <laughs> Only if it causes any discomfort. Thanks, Darren. So, is Victoria? I haven't really seen her around lately. Uh, she's been working in Manchester. Oh, no. But not someone else pregnant. The scab's the one who's been causing all the hassle. Oh, dear. Well, fortunately, it looks like you might be stopping today. Look after yourself, yeah? Thanks. What is it? That's Josh. I don't think it was a social call. Do you really need a lining paper? Well, your dad always did me for a better job. My dad was a good decorator, though. I uh, learned a few things off him, you know. All right. Not like a bit of gale power. <laughs> well, that's all there is now in this house. Yeah. Love the other one. Thought you liked having me dad's mug? Not today. He's not my best books at the moment. I'll just keep
keep thinking about that day. What about it? Well, if your dad hadn't have been there. Mom, now listen. If our Jason hadn't have gone in after your dad, for heaven's sake. Mom, just settle, will ya? I mean, look at this, please. How long was I at your dad to get it finished? Why don't we just get a decorating to do it? Because I want to do it myself. Get me a cloth. Listen, Mum, I've been thinking about these bereavement counsellors. Nikki! I don't need a counsellor. I need a cloth. You've got to come up with something a bit more sophisticated than this. Well, you haven't, have you? Just tell me what's going on. I thought I'd been invited to lunch. You have, down by the pool. I want you to listen to something. What are you planning, Lindsay? This is all going to go wrong. I know it is. Dad, he could be here any minute. Just leave, and when you do, go the back way. Rose, when your mobile rings, just pick it up and listen. When are you going back to Barcelona? That's my business. After the weekend, then, I take it? It'll be after you leave, that's for sure. The children were nearly taken into foster care. I, being their father, prevented that from happening. Well, bully for you, but now that you've done your bit, you can go. So I take it you don't want me round, then? I never did. Something's never changed, do they? Well, I've worked and worked at it, and I'm pleased to say you still make me as sick as you used to do. Oh, good, because I'd hate to have the illusion shattered that you'd finally grown up. Lisa, could you get that, please? Sure. Oh, well done. Forget about trying to wheedle your way back in here. Your history. <laughs> I haven't heard that from Susanna yet. Be patient. Right, here we are. Oh, thanks. Do you want me to feed her? No, it's all right. Oh. We're enjoying being back in Mummy's arms, aren't we now? Hmm? Hi, you must be Mrs Musgrove. Yes, hi. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for being so supportive while I was in the hospital. Have you had a nice time? Oh, I think I enjoyed it more than he did. Almost made me young for grandchildren. <laughs> Much too young for that. <laughs> you smooth talker. Yes, isn't he? <laughs> nee, would you like a drink? Uh, yeah, I'd love one. It's not too much trouble. His hands are a wee bit grubby. I'll just give them a wipe. A bit more? <laughs> no? No? You'd uh, better ask him to go. What? He served his purpose. He thinks he's getting his feet under the table again. The last thing you want is him back here. I'm looking for Lindsay Corker. I think I preferred the old colour scheme. Sorry, bad taste. No point me getting off on the wrong foot now, was there? I hope not. I was hoping this would be friendly. Polly, can we have the wireless, please? Yeah. So, how's Susanna keeping? She might be getting out of hospital today. She's been really ill. Oh, terrible thing, Crossfire. Still, something good usually comes from the bad. Do you reckon? Mm -hmm. For example, this. A few weeks ago we were enemies and now, well, this is so civilised. Perhaps we could become friends. Perhaps. Depends on the outcome of this meeting. Mm. Which I'm still unsure about. Why? It's too easy. I think you've got something up your sleeve. Well, I haven't. <laughs> What's the pitch? I take it the club is mine, but why this submissive approach? Well, I suppose I've got more to gain by not fighting you anymore. <laughs> you took your time. But this could be the start of something. Makes me wish this was champagne. It's a bit early for me yet. Ross has been really understanding. He wants me to be considered that job in Brussels. I think he should. My dad used to put that up horizontally. I'm taking it down now. Well, if we're going to do the job properly, it's way starting again. All right, come on. Yes, but if it all rips, we'll be short. I'll go up the shops and get another own. Stripped. Look. You just take that off, I won't be long, get okay? And get me some tranquilizers while you're at it. Think about that job. Mum. Mum! Hey. Are you listening to me? I was just thinking, Nick. What was your dad doing in that club? Why, Nick? I 
I don't know. I don't want things complicated by third parties. What's Miss Dixon's interest in all this? Oh, she might be pulling out. <laughs> um, was it something I did? Look, a lot of time and money has gone into getting this place up and running, and I need to know that you're not going to walk in, push me aside and leave me with nothing. I wouldn't do a thing like that. Well, you mightn't push me aside. <laughs> well, no-one else will. What? You mean that brother and his cow of a wife are going to let you walk in and take over? I thought you and that cow were rather chummy. Not if she wants the club. Don't worry about Alistair and Rose. Why? Oh. Last time was close. Last time? The bomb in this place. Oh, the one you planted. <laughs> I'm not that stupid, Lindsay. But the one I had planted. I gave the orders. I don't do the dirty work. Well, the point is, they're still around. Mm -hmm. Winter's on its way. Who knows what dangers lie ahead in an icy road with dodgy brakes on the car. You done with that? Oh, I'm well satisfied. Get the dinners ready for my lot. All right. <laughs> oh, come on. Suzanne, if you need any more help, you only have to ask. Oh, I'm ever so grateful. Thank you. OK. Bye. Bye. I'll see you out. Don't prolong his departure, will you? You know it's all for the best. Bye-bye. Well, I don't know where he'll go from here. That's not your responsibility. No, then. Look at that. Oh, he's getting a big boy now, isn't he? Just look at that face. Oh. <laughs> Max, might be better if you went now. Oh, I see. You've uh, taken diplomatic advice, have you? Sound advice, I'd say. Yes, well, you would do, wouldn't you? Look, Susanna, you need my assistance here. I'm, I'm the father of the children and... You don't even know them. Look, will you please just mind your own business? That's enough, Max. Susanna, you are in a hole. She's going back to Spain, I take it? <laughs> Look, I'm offering my help for as long as you need it. Don't say a word! We can manage without you. Fine. Look, my mobile number. You take that. You phone me any time you want. Take care. Good riddance. Can I have a coffee, please? Yeah, sure. You meeting someone? Yeah, he's late already. Oh, you see, that's fellas for you. Excuse me. Um, Jackie's just been on the phone to make sure we've remembered about the signs of the vodka promo next week. Yeah, I saw that this heavy. I knew they'd be back. Hey, can I have some uh, chicken fried rice and some sweet and sour pork, love? Hey, just leave it out, will you? Don't get involved. Well, he shouldn't get away with giving people hassle. Doesn't this fella ever give up? It's the second time he's been round today. Right, what about a start rounding everyone up then? What for? We decided at the Vezzi's meeting, if he was in the area, we'd get together and sort it. Right, well, listen, Jim, if you need a hand. Yeah, thanks. We might. <sighs> Only if they really need you. I don't know whether I've made a big mistake. I am going to find it a struggle. Triumph through adversity. It's a bit glib when I'm on my own. Well, let's sit down and work it all out, then. I don't know whether I gave Max his marching orders because you wanted it, or I did. There's no way you can take him back. Anyway, it's not fair on the children if he pops in and out of their lives. He has got rights that he could insist on. I wouldn't even think about that now. No, I won't have the time seeing to the children all by myself. We'll work something out. You know... He told me he still loves me. 
What was it? Heads for you and tails for Fay. Don't believe a word of it. He'll say anything to get back in here. No. No, thanks. Oh, I think I'll pass as well. Got to look after the figure. <laughs> you know what intrigues me? This turn around. I'd have thought I was the last man on earth you'd want to have lunch with. <sighs> business is business. I was wondering about us spending some less formal time together. I don't think I'm quite up to that yet. <laughs> What's that? Um, it's my battery. Let's have a look. Why is this on? Who's on the other end of this? Come on, bitch. <laughs> Don't you dare touch me. Who is on the other end of this? You and I are going for a walk. Hello, Judas. <sighs> the pair of you are in it together. You tried to kill your own brother. The first day I met you, I got a bad feeling about you. Yeah, feelings mutual. I told Alistair to keep you well out of the business before we were even married. Who the hell do you think you are? We had a good family business before you stepped in and softened him up. Get out. I was thinking of ordering a sweet. Well, ask for a doggy bag. And I mean, go far, far away, or Alistair will get to know. He won't believe you. Oh, I think he will. He's had enough of you, and this would just push him over the edge. And I think, despite brotherly love, he's likely to kill you himself. <laughs> then I'll have something to celebrate. <sighs> Strong women, eh? I always hated them. Full marks, Lindsay. I should have snuffed your pretty little life out when I had the chance. How far will you be going? Ah. I'll follow the sun. The Algarve, bit of golf. Try and improve my handicap. No, you're stuck with that face. <laughs> I'll drop the address in the post. If you ever need a holiday, you only have to ask. We'd have made a good couple. And hand out the sheets. I'll get over you. <laughs> oh, I don't think you will. As long as I've got the strength to swing a golf club, there's always a chance it might connect to the side of your head. Bye. Oh, love to Kylie. Oh, my God. Well done, Lindsay. <laughs> Flame and foul. Thank goodness it didn't go off before his blood. Nice work. I'll send you the tape. You recorded it? Just in case. I'm gonna have to watch you, aren't I? I'm learning. Despite our growing friendship, just a little reminder about that 57K. The deal was you keep Callum away from me. You've hardly kept your side of the bargain, have you? December the 1st, Lindsay. What with the millennium and all that? Christmas is going to cost a fortune this year. Is that them? Sure is. I reckon they'll be paying us a visit. So, let's go get ready. Charlotte. I'm so sorry. I was just about to get. Yeah. I popped into surgery, got tied up with an emergency. I'll forgive you this time. Thanks. Cheers. Mike, we come and help. It's getting busy. Yeah, okay, boss. Looks like your friends are back. Yeah, where's luck? You reckon there'll be trouble? And I don't think they've make... come for a peace rally. No, they're horrible. They've been giving people hassle in the garage. But if there's anything that I can do. Yeah, cheers. I thought he was going over Victoria. Yeah, well, he must have traded it in for another model. Mm, that's how he had seen it. Maybe going out the closer bay. I've got to do something. Just wait and see what happens. Rich, I can't just stand on the sidelines.
first started uni, I was like a fish out of water. I mean, my lecturer took me under her wing and made me work my socks off. And she must have seen something in me that I wasn't aware of. I don't know. Maybe she sees what we all see. Mm, what's that, then? Someone with integrity. Resilience. I need it working in the practice. Some of your colleagues are so arrogant. <laughs> uh, well, you see, we're doctors. It comes with the turf when dealing with the inferior professions. Are you looking for a punch in the mouth, doctor? I don't mind a bit of pain every now and again. I do a wonderful body massage. Well, I can't wait. <laughs> Before we, um, get involved, I'm not stepping on someone else's toes, am I? What gives you that idea? Well, the practice receptionists seem to have it in their heads that you're already taken. <laughs> no, I'm a free agent. But you are recently out of a relationship. More of a friendship, really. No? My dance card is completely clear. Well, then. Here's to a successful massage. No, Jay. No, for a lot, no. I'm not bottling it. It's just, no. Jerome was right. Let's get them and show Josh that we're not going to take it no more. You said they were just for protecting ourselves. I mean, we've got to get ready. It's not like Josh and his mates are going to wait while we prepare, is it? Lads, get yourselves inside. Just everyone stay calm. Hey, is he ready? Yeah, whenever. There's nothing for you lot round here. Those two, they'll do. Look, you're wasting your time. So you keep telling us. We mean it. Listen, let's go back inside. What are you doing? Are you serious? If they come any closer, then yeah. Is that what I think it is? You just better stay back. Tim? Do you know what damage that can do? If they come anywhere near us, they'd be getting knees. Tim, you put that down. You better talk some sense into them, Mick. I said, put it down! No. And you. No way. For God's sake, Jerome. Look, why don't you lot just get off? We've got a job to do for a mate. Right, then. You're going to have to take us all on. Give that to me, Jerome. Don't come near me, Mick. What are you doing? If he's got the guts, he's going to torch me. <laughs> don't push me. Jerome, he's not worth it. You can't do this. It's wrong. Why don't you listen to her? What's wrong with her? Just chuck it. Go on. Start the race war. Is this what you really want? Evidence if you want it, people. Turn that off. You don't, please. Right, now, you lot just clear off, OK? You'll all be on film. Come on! Come on, then! Not so brave now, are you? Listen. No, you listen. Hey, get on close up, soft lad. Yeah, so you're gonna throw then or what? Shut it. Maybe I will. Go get the piece quick. Drove! No! Scum! <laughs> Stupid! See? They won't come back now because they know we're serious. You're leaving. Get your stuff and go now. You can't do that, Dad. I've just done it. I'm right now. Go! Anything Jerome says or does, or you just follow along. I told him I didn't want anything to do with it. I had a job, a good job, till you screwed it up. Don't you dare start on about that. You know why I did that, and that's the end of the subject, all right? Why are you being so horrible? Lead me to those croissants. What are you up to today? Don't know. Might go into town. 
Oh, no, you don't. Going into town means meeting up with Jerome. Just because you kicked him out doesn't mean I can't meet him. Listen, I don't want you anywhere near him, all right? This isn't right. You treat me like a kid. You are like a kid. Letting yourself be dragged into his crazy stunts with petrol bombs? That was his idea, not mine. Look, if you want to be treated like an adult, you got to start acting like one. You should have told me about them bombs. Now stay away from him. But he's my best mate. No mate of yours. Not after all this. And if you've got nothing to do, you can wash the car. You've seen the time. Should have woken me. Well, I assumed you'd like to sleep on for a while. As it's Sunday. Were you all right in the spare bed? Yeah. Fine. Oh, you didn't say you were going out? Just for an hour or two. Well, I thought maybe we could go into town, have lunch, see a film. There's some stuff I have to pick up for work. Why, well, Liverpool, I suppose. Yeah. But it's the weekend. Can't it wait till another day? I really need the papers for work. I suppose you'll be seeing those two. I'm only going to be a couple of hours. Back for lunch? Going straight there and back, OK? OK, fine. See you when I see you. Right. Don't be too long, will you? No. How long does it take to pour two glasses of juice? I couldn't ignore Nathan. Not when I wanted to speed him on his way. Why would you want to do that, then? To make sure the coast's clear. You weren't worried about that last night. That was last night. Too much wine. Inhibitions this morning, then? Inhibitions? I don't believe in them. <laughs> look at this mess. I wasn't even bothered to clean it up. Leave it? What can I? The place couldn't look worse if that petrol bomb was a bit. <sighs> she did make a bit of a mess, didn't she? I nearly died when I found her knee crying. What's wrong with you? Eh? You don't want to think that you thought all this was normal. Oh, she's still upset. It's more than that. Where is she? She's going to get more wallpaper. What is she messing at getting more wallpaper, eh, when she hasn't even bothered to tidy up in here? I think it helps to take her mind off me dad and our Jace. She's not right, Nick. I'm scared to make to herself some more. Me mum? Never. She wouldn't do anything like that. A few months ago, she wouldn't have gone around smashing glass doors, would she? Nikki, we've got to help her. We've got to do more than what we're doing now. Don't get your cranes out of the extension, son. Go on. You can still smell that petrol bomb out there. Yep. Mixed throne that your own lad out over all this. Oh, Jackie should have taken him on. He's a hothead. Is your mother still in bed? Yeah. Oh, I'm only here because the fella who's fixing me cooker turned the power off. I was freezing. Well, if she's not around, maybe you'll tell me how you went on with Callum Finnegan. He fell for it. Rose knows everything. Good. His brother will kill him. She's not going to tell Alistair. You're joking. Well, that's part of the threat to keep him out of the country. She sent him to Portugal on a one-way ticket. So, you opened Rose's eyes then, eh? Yeah. But she still wants the 57 grand back by December the 1st. You bar? But it was her own brother-in-law who set you back like this. I know, she won't budge. <sighs> so what are you going to do? Well, the club opens in a fortnight. I'll, I'll just have to work hard and see if my share of the profits will cover it. Well, it is the busiest time of the year for parties and stuff. But, love, you're talking a few weeks. I know. But how can you? Dad, I'm not stupid. I know how long I've got. <laughs> What are you doing here? I have paid my rent till the end of the month. Thought I'd drop by and have a cup of coffee with Nathan. He's gone out. Well, then I have to drink it by myself. Unless you'd care to join me. I have to go out. Besides, shouldn't you be making coffee for your husband, tending to his every need? I've only left him for an hour or two. Most people would ask how Mark is. I know exactly how Mark is. I'm a doctor, remember? Why are you being so horrible? Lead me to those croissants. Oh! 
I might have guessed. Well, you went back to your husband. What do you expect? Are we going out or are you going to introduce me? We're going out. Oh, please, don't leave on my account. Right. Come on. Yeah, who's she? Uh, what's that about her husband? Uh, just a friend of Nathan's. Nathan's been seeing a married woman. It, much too complicated. Dad, what do you think about changing the name of the club? Well, what's wrong with Millennium? Oh, I need people through the door. And if it's going to be associated with bombs and people being dead... Yeah, people soon forget about that. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure. And on top of that, Millennium's starting to sound corny now. No, I'm fed up of hearing a flaming word. I don't know, love. Well, I spoke to Susanna. She was all right about changing it, but... Well, it was Jackie's idea in the first place. I don't know how she'd take it. <sighs> Badly, no one air. Hey, why don't you call it Y2K? Nah. I want something really original. Not something that sounds like a mob of Chinese gangsters. Oh, hi, Dora. Hi, I sleep OK? Oh, yeah, and did I need it? What are you doing here? Oh, the fella who's fixing the cooker turned the power off. I was cold. Oh, right. Right, I better go and see how he's doing. I'll see you later if you're in the garage, Mum. All right, then. Try. See you, love. You're working? No, I'm wearing this for Sunday school. Of course, I'm working. I'm working all the hours I can guess. Sunday afternoons included. That's all right. You're getting your expenses from the court, aren't you? They'll come in handy. That doesn't make up for you not working, Jimmy. What have you done about finding a job? No luck yet. Well, you can't just wait for luck, love. You know, you've got to go out and find something. It's not that easy. No, and it's not easy for me, Jim. We're broke and I can't work any harder. Yeah, well, something will come up. And will these wait until something comes up? Because I can't pay them all. I know, but... Jimmy, you've got to start thinking seriously about what you can offer people, you know. Now, you used to do a bit of van driving, didn't you, after we got married? Why don't you think about that? And then yell Billy on all those rewiring jobs. You could get a job as a Sparks mate or something. You've just got to think well, positive, you no, know. No, I don't want that. Why not? We've all got to make do, Jimmy. God knows I do. Well, why should I? Listen, these would have been paid by now if you hadn't snitched on me to Karen. I had a job, a good job, till you screwed it up. Don't you dare start on about that. You know why I did that, and that's the end of the subject, all right? Why don't you just get out there and get a job? Vic. Oh, is everything all right? You've been crying. Just a bit. I didn't expect to see you. Neither did your flatmate. Turn my back for five minutes, he's got some blonde bimbo in his bed. Mm, good. You ran into Charlotte. Yeah, look, she stayed over last night. How could he? Well, I'm sorry to say it, but uh, I think he's just hitting back at you. But he didn't even know I was coming. Yeah, well, whether you were going to show up or not, that's what he's doing. You going back to Mark's really hurt him. Who is she? She's a physio attached to the medical practice. <sighs> Look, she's a very nice girl and all that, but all Darren's done is revert to type. You know, when in doubt, reach for the nearest blonde. But you know she won't mean anything to him. It's you he wants. But now, of all times... And yeah, well, he can't help himself. No, I mean, doing it now proves that he doesn't give a monkeys about me. Why couldn't he have waited? What, you mean, wait until Mark... If you have to be so blunt. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just that from what Darren tells me, it's likely to be a long haul. He discussed it. No, honestly, well, not in those terms. I mean, of waiting, how long Mark will last. He was so horrible about Mark's illness. He just wanted to get me out of here as quickly as possible so I wouldn't see that girl. Oh, look, try and forget about her. But Jerome didn't kick that lad in. No, but one of his stupid posse did. Why don't you tell me about the petrol bombs? I didn't want him to make them. Well, you didn't tell me. Why? I'll tell you why. Because you're too soft. You're easily led. Anything Jerome says or does, or you just follow along. I told him I didn't want anything to do with it. Oh, it's easy for you to say that now. What if that cart and his mate didn't turn up yesterday? Or the petrol still be in the boot of Jerome's car? You've let him walk all over you. You've got no mind of your own. You've wasted months hanging around with him when you should have been getting on with things. Getting yourself a job, getting yourself sorted out. I need some pliers. Get on with it. I'm doing it, aren't I? From now on, you'll do exactly as you're told. 
What can we do, though? Blood's gonna take that job in Brussels. What about us? She's never gonna go and leave us. I know she won't. We'll have to make it then, won't we? Are we gonna do that? I don't know. We'll have to find a way. But I'd do anything to stop from having a breakdown, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Right. That's it then. We'll tell her she's got to take it. Fancy another? Oh, thanks, but I should get going. Look, um, Jackie and I are going for a drink at the club later. Why don't you join us? Oh, I'd love to, but... I'd... You've got to make some space for yourself, you know. I've got work. Yeah, well, work's not enough. If Mark's already... clingy, then he's only going to get worse when the illness really sets in. You've got to make him realise that you've got a life of your own, which includes seeing your friends. Yeah, but it's hard when you lot are here and I'm stuck over in Manchester. Yeah. Well, try harder. <laughs> I will. Well, if it makes it any easier, bring Mark with you. I mean, it's been ages since we had a good night out together. Oh, I don't know about that. What would Darren say? Oh, it's me that's inviting you. Now, just promise me you'll both come over. I'll see. You know, and if he hits the booze, it won't take much for him to get falling over drunk, will it? <laughs> Nay. <Nave. laughs> <laughs> well, what does it matter? I mean, we can carry him home any time he likes. We've done it before, haven't we? Yeah. Many a time. I better get going. Are you sure about that drink? Mm, yeah, but I really should get going. <sighs> we'll see you soon then. Okay. And remember, if you need to talk to anyone any time, you can always call me or Doc. I'm not sure about him. I was hoping I would be able to talk to him, but. Forget about the blonde. You know what he's like. I know you're only trying to help and playing it down and everything, but it was so soon. From where I'm standing, it looks like I mean absolutely nothing to him. I shouldn't have come back. Vic. Uh, I've, I've got to go. If we're that desperate and it's all down to survival, then let me work at the club with our Lindsay. No. There's a job there waiting. Look, one club job was enough for you, Jimmy. When you were working in Barry Grant's place, well, you, you got into heroin, didn't you? I can't go through that again. You just drift back into all that. No, I won't, love. I promise you I won't. I've got to get away. Look, I know you don't believe me, but the last thing I want to do is to go back to being a scally. I'm not interested in thieving or messing about with drugs. I just want to do a job that matters. And being a gopher for our Lindsay and Jackie Dixon is doing a job that matters, is it? No, but it would give me time. And it would bring in enough while I look for something. No, Jimmy, I can't take the risk. Love, it would be regular money. And I wouldn't slip back, I promise you. <laughs> Jimmy, I could line the walls of this place with all the promises I've had off you. I'd sooner spend the rest of my life on family credit than let you go back into the clubs. There's our wills to think about and all. When we got back together in the summer, when our wills came out of the Aussie, I said I wanted a chance to be a proper dad. I promised I'd spend more time with him, and that's what I've been doing. <laughs> you can't spend the rest of your life looking after Will and not even bothering to work. Yes, I know I'm not saying that. But if I worked for our Lindsay, it would be mostly night work, wouldn't it? Hey, I'd still be able to spend time with him. Do you think I'm a fool? There's hundreds of jobs out there where you can work nights and evenings. Yeah, but our Lindsay's family. It would be more flexible. Now, just stop it. Do you know what? I'm starting to think you've gone work shy. Why don't you do what anyone else does, Jimmy, and get down the job centre? I've done all that. It's a waste of time. No! No, you've been wasting your time traipsing around flaming art galleries. Oh, is that right? So what are these, then? Look at them. Heavy one in rejection. And they're only the ones that replied. Most of the others didn't even bother. There's kids queuing up for these jobs. Nobody wants the likes of me anymore. You didn't tell me you'd started applying. Yeah, well, like you said, you haven't been here, have you? I am trying. Well, I'm sorry. I just 
just have to try a bit harder. <sighs> I'm needing these. Was someone on the phone? Yeah, Jerome. What did they say? I told them to sling us up. You what? I told them to stay away and not bother phoning you. I don't want you anywhere near him, right? And I'm going for a shower. Don't even think about phoning him back. Well, I hope you two haven't got anything planned. I want to get this started. Do you like it? It's OK. Very nice. Oh, talk about enthusiasm. Mum, me and Emily have been talking. We're both very worried about you. I'm doing all right. We don't think the smashing the patio doors down is doing all right. No, I was obsessed. Well, I couldn't help it. I'm doing the house, but it isn't going to help you either. What she's trying to say is, um, we think you should take that job in Brussels. But I can't. Not now. After everything that's happened. You can, Mum. It'll help you get back to normal quicker if you're busy. We think it'll do you good. Oh, I don't know. You two have been really worried, haven't you? You made us worry smashing up the doors. Well, made up that you're so considerate, but, you know, it's not that easy just going off to Brussels, live there. It is. <laughs> I couldn't. Mum, you getting back to normal, it's more important than anything. Think about it, Mum. We just want you to be happy. It's good off your love, but it's soft. We want you to take the job. You yeah, can't even speak the language and you're doing your GCSEs this year. I won't pick out when I'm staying here with Nicky. Uh, no chance, madam. Not that mad. Well, I'll stay here with me now and then. I am not going anywhere without you. There must be somewhere you can take your GCSEs over there. What about you, love? I'll carry on at the uni. I can live at Bernie's flat. Are they? I thought you worried about me mum like yourself. I am, bud. Eh, uh, just a minute. Nicky can't give up a degree because of me. Your dad would have gone mad. Yeah, and he'd have gone mad if you'd have given up this chance of a job as well. You sure about all this? I don't care what happens as long as you're all right. I'm not sure. I think you should talk to Ross. I made up with you two. Do you know that? Is that me letting us off with the wallpaper and then? <laughs> I'll talk to Ross tomorrow. See what he thinks. All right? Yeah. Great. You happy now? Hi. Been back long? Long enough to have a coffee with Vic. Oh. You're tactless, weren't you? I never was going to walk in on Charlotte, me, did I? Did you know? Absolutely not. Came as a complete surprise to me, too. How was she? Well, she saw Charlotte coming out of your room, so how do you think? Upset. Yeah, just a bit. Oh, God, what am I going to do? I think the expression's about crying over spilt milk. You think? Well, you had your chance, but you didn't fight for her. To see how things were with Mark. Well, I warned her of all the dangers to make time for herself and all that, but she seemed to have made up her mind to stand by him. What exactly are you doing? Ah, well, you might as well have the other piece of bad news. What? We've got to move out by Friday, so uh, I'm packing up. Friday? Why? Well, while you were dallying with Charlotte, I was talking to Ian Lee, the developer. He's decided to, that this place is the first up for development. Didn't you tell him that it was inconvenient? No, no way. Not with his generous offer of compensation. Where the hell are we going to go? Well, who knows? But we've got the funds and a week to find somewhere, just like we did this place. Did you know he'd been applying for jobs? Yeah, but he didn't get any. Why? I was giving him a hard time, you know, about not finding work, and then he showed me this stack of rejection <laughs> letters. Felt a bit rotten. Just have to try harder. Yeah, well, that's what I told him, and um, he's talking about working for you again. I don't think we can afford that at the moment. Well, let's keep it that way, OK? See you later. See ya. Come on, son. Let's show up that bunch of amateurs at the park, eh? Yeah.
supposed to be washing the car. What's going on? I'm just picking up my CDs that Tim helped himself to. Well, shouldn't you ask first? I haven't got time. I'm going. You what? I've had enough. I'm going to live with Jay. No way. You're going nowhere. I'm 18 and you can't stop me. Don't give me that. I'm sick and tired of being treated like some sort of kid. You've been on me back since Josh and all that came round here. And I'm sick of it. Jerome set off a petrol bomb, for God's sake. Yeah, but all that, it wasn't us. Josh started all this, not me and Jay. Anyway, I'm going. I'll be in Vonnie's. Oh, yeah, and I'll be straight on the phone. She'll send you back. I don't care. I'll find somewhere else. Look, I'm not having this. If that Carter's done me one favour, it's given me the chance to get shut of Jerome. How could you say that about your own family? And he's me mate. Look, you're well shut of him. He's bad news. I knew at the minute his mother dumped him with us. You've always had the downer on him. Cos it's written all over him, Leo. He's trouble. If he carries on the way he's doing, he'll end up in jail and you could be with him. I don't care. Anyway, it's better than here. You always say how things are going to change, how you're going to cut me some slack, but you never do. And it's going to get even worse. You just keep me in there like some prisoner, giving me crap jobs like a slave. Get in the house. Get off. That could always make you. Yeah, that's the only way you can. Using violence, which you're so against. Look, I don't want you to go. Well, I've made up my mind. Hey. Hey. How long have you been back? Only long enough to put the kettle on. You should have woken me. I don't know when I dropped off. Here you go. Thanks. Um, I thought you might be coming back for lunch. I got talking. What, with Darren? No, with Nath. He wants us to go over for a night out. Did you see Darren? Only briefly. He was going out. Anything to say? Nothing. Look, what you said this morning, do you want to go and see a film this afternoon or are you going to carry on with your plane? No, oh, I think I've done enough for today. You haven't touched it in years. I've been too busy working. When did you start making it? You got married. I thought I'd better get things moving and finish it while I can. <laughs> I'll phone and book us some tickets. Any preferences on the film? Nah, no, nothing will do. Um, can you get us tickets for tonight? Well, we can go now, can't we? I was going to take this upstairs while I had a bath. Thought you might want to come and talk to me. Like we used to on Sunday afternoons. With the same end result. Those keys? Uh, yeah. I think it might be Susanna's from next door. Susanna's? It's been a long time since I had anything to celebrate. So I intend to start making the most of it. I think look at Max Farnham. What about him? Well, he was carrying on behind Susanna's back for the whole of the married life, and she never had a clue. Hey, Margie. Close up, but not too close to a predator with deadly venom. The Patagonian lancehead, O'Shea's dangerous reptiles, next here on 4. on offer. Full English breakfast. And what's for dessert? Any chance of an action replay of last night's performance? Just eat your breakfast. It's so nice having you around again, Vic. It's nice to be around. No regrets about moving back in here? Well, you know me. Never do anything I don't want to. In which case, I was hoping... You might like to start wearing this again. Where did you get that from? I picked it up when you threw it at me in the bar. <laughs> at least said about that the better, I think. Forget the spread, and why don't you come back in here with me? Oh, I don't know. I, I just don't think we should be rushing into things. Well, all I know is that I, I can't afford to take things slowly. Please, Vic. If everything you've said is true, and if you genuinely want to be with me, then why wait? Mm. 
Mum, are you okay? Yeah. Just having a clear house. If I want to make a go of this Brussels job, I have to sort out what I'm going to take with me. What are you going to do with all my dad's stuff? Don't worry, I'll sort that out later. What am I doing, Nick? How can I think of even going away and leaving you behind? Come on, Mum, we've already been through all this. I mean, I'll be fine. We'll still be able to see each other in the holidays. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's just going to be so hard leaving all these memories behind. But you know it's for the best in the long run. I mean, you're never going to be able to move on if you sat round here all the time dwelling on the past. Yeah. Should give me my best shot, eh? You know, if I don't like it, I can always come home. Nobody's forced me to stay out there forever. Do you recognise those keys? I was looking through your dad's stuff and I found them. Eh, uh, yeah. I think they might be Susanna's from next door. Susanna's? Yeah, remember, my dad had them that time when she was locked out. That's weird. He never mentioned it to me. Oh, he probably forgot. Better take them back. No, I'll take them over to him. Mean, you've got enough to do here. No, you're all right. Wouldn't mind going over there anyway, see how she's getting on. It's the least I can do after what she's been through. Got that video for you there, Meg. What was that, Mike? Got that video from last week. Told the police might want to see you. All right, yeah. Cheers, Mike. It must be weird for you seeing it all boarded up like this. Yeah, believe me, it is. But don't get me wrong, Mike. I know I've done the right thing. It's just kind of feeling a bit sad, you know, thinking about all the memories I've got at this place, good and bad. <laughs> yeah. Any idea what it's going to be? Or? Yeah, an offy. No, not that Jackie here, you calling it that. It's a wine shop as far as she's concerned. And what's it going to do with Jackie? Well, it's a new business venture, didn't you know? No. When did this happen? I don't know. You know what she's like? She plays the cards very close to her chest. Well, you could say that again. Well, at least all these people will go sneaking into the bar with bottles of brandy in their handbags. And as for two cokes, I'll still be handing the profits over to her. She's not soft, is she? No, she isn't. But I must be. How do you mean? No wonder she was so eager for me to give the chippy up. Oh, come on, Mick. You said yourself you've done the right thing. That's before I knew she had an ulterior motive. Is she in there now? Um, no, she's gone to see the suppliers. Well, you tell her I'll be having a word with her. All right, Nick, you're up and about early. Just had to get out the house. Don't tell me. More riots on the close. <laughs> no, not yet, anyway. Um, I was just saying to Mick, it's going to be an offy. Should be open soon. Sooner the better. Guess what? What? Jackie Dixon, that money-grabbing cow. What about her? She's only turning the chip into an off-license. Hang on, I thought you were going to tell me something really terrible, then. Well, it is as far as I'm concerned. Hey, hang on. How am I supposed to hear you when you turn your back on me? I said it is as far as I'm concerned. Well, why don't we could do it an offie round here? It'll be dead handy. I haven't got a problem with it being an office in. I've just got a problem with it being run by air. Why? Oh, why do you think? When she was encouraging me to sell up, she never once mentioned that she had eyes on the place. Would it have made any difference? Well, maybe not. Would it just be nice if she told me? That's all. But sometimes it's not until you lose somebody that you appreciate just how lucky you were. I remember when we first met. <laughs> all my mates all fancied him. I couldn't believe it when I found out he was after me. Oh, you mustn't put yourself down like that. Oh, I used to get myself into some terrible states. Thought every woman that glanced in his direction was after him. Well, I'm sure he felt the same way about you. Do you reckon? Every time we went for a drink, we'd be ready to rip the face off any girl who gave him a second look. <laughs> really? In fact, I did once. I got rotten in the grafting one night. Ends up breaking some girl's nose just because she asked him the time. Poor girl ended up getting carted off to the Royal in an ambulance. I probably shouldn't have admitted to that. It's, I was only a kid at the time, you know. Tea or coffee? Oh, um, I wouldn't say no to a tea. You know, it took me years to accept. He was just content with what he had. 
He was a family man at the end of the day, and all he wanted was to be with me and the kids. <sighs> Must have been something wrong with him. I wouldn't say that. It's strange, you know, being in here. I feel closer to him. He did a lot of work for you in here, didn't he? Yes. He was really very good. Even Christmas Day, over here like a shot to help you out. It's the kind of fellow he was. Yes. There was a time, you know, where I was even a little bit jealous of you, you know. <laughs> really? <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous, but... You know, when you went into labour with your little girl and he was with you, I was fuming. Because <laughs> he wasn't at the birth of any of our kids and... Oh, I give him a terrible time. Greg. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. You see, that's how pathetic it was. How could anyone be jealous of the husband giving a pregnant woman a lift to the hospital? I mean... Ah, to get out of the house, Biff was doing me head in. Why, what's up with him? Jackie Dixon's turning the chippy into an offie, and he's not very happy about it. It's got nothing to do with him anymore, has it? Well, exactly. Don't know what his problem is. I'm glad you're in anyway. I needed a change of scenery. I'm always in now, aren't I? I'm always in now. Back on the scrap heap, me. Join the club. <sighs> I can't tell you how much I'm missing the school, you know, Sim. Seeing the kids, the lessons, even working on the tapestry. Jackie doesn't seem to understand. She's just nagging at me to get another job. Any job. I know you've probably thought of this, but... Why don't you get yourself to college, do it all properly? You're joking, aren't you? At my age, it'll be time for me to retire by the time I finish. What are you going to do? I don't know. But I'll have to do something soon, though, even if it's just to get Jackie off me back. I think she's scared I'll end up drifting back to my old ways if I sit round doing nothing all day. She's probably right. No way. I've come too far to go back there. I've had the taste of a different kind of life, haven't I? And I'm not prepared to give it up that easily. I liked having a voice, you know, wearing a suit. Hearing the kids call me sir. Sounds like the power went to your head. No, it wasn't like that. Saying for the first time in my life, I was doing something useful. I had a reason for being here. I tell you. I can't go back to doing just some crappy old job after doing that. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't. I thought I may as well start moving these in here. You've made me the happiest man on earth. Again. <laughs> it's nice to see you smiling for a change. I have to keep pinching myself to believe it's actually happening. Well, it is. <laughs> I love you. It's understandable. I'm supposed to say you love me too. I love me too. <laughs> <laughs> a sense of humour, that's what this place has been lacking. Get the rest of my stuff. Or we could just go back to bed for a couple of hours. It'd be like having our honeymoon all over again. I took the day off work to get myself sorted. Do it later. It's been a long time since I had anything to celebrate. So I intend to start making the most of it. You've got a visitor. Hiya. Hiya. Do you mind coming around, do you? No, I'm just making some dinner. Fancy some beans on toast. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't mind. Right, I'm off down to the job centre. I don't know why I bother. You don't mind, job if you like. Hey, I might take you up on that. <laughs> I'll see you later. See you later. So, you had a good morning? Oh, wasn't too bad, actually. Nathan's been in court. <laughs> oh, well, that's something. We'll be back in this afternoon, though. Uh, Abby phoned before. What did she have to say for herself? Well, I told her I'll go up this weekend and visit her and Leah. Oh, right. Wouldn't it be nice if you let me know first? I just have. Oh, did you know I hadn't made any plans for the weekend? Why have you? But, no, but that's not the point. Just seems like the minute Abby snaps her fingers, you go running. I'm only going to see Leah. I mean, I'm not interested in Abby. I hope not. Why would I look at another woman when I've got you? 
Isn't that what all fellas say? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? I just don't think you men can help yourselves half the time. I mean, look at Max Farnham. Well, what about him? Well, he was carrying on behind Susanna's back for the whole of the married life and she never had a clue. Yeah, well, I'm not like him, so you don't have to go getting all paranoid on me. Well, then there's poor Margie Shadwick. She's still walking around talking about Greg like he was some kind of hero. And all the time he was shagging Susanna behind her back. He was what? Well, if he could keep it a secret with the woman next door, what chance have I got to find out about you up in Scotland? <sighs> Greg Shadwick and Susanna? Well, didn't you know it? I just thought it was common knowledge. Not to me, it wasn't. doing this. Things have just piled up with me being out of action for so long. I've just been up to my eyes since I got back. Oh, snap. What? Did you buy that yourself? Oh, yes. Yeah, Katrina mentioned that you had the same one. Greg got me one identical. <gasps> really? <laughs> Coincidence, eh? Yeah. Well, to be honest with you, dear, we've been going through a bit of a rough patch and... He was really trying hard, you know, make things better, and we're just starting to come out of it. When oh, don't go upsetting yourself. I'm sorry. When he came in, well, to see how you were, I didn't want to go on maudlin on you. Should I get you a tissue? No, no, I'll be fine. I'm like this all the time. <laughs> One minute I'm okay, and next minute I'm sobbing buckets. I just, I just miss him so much. I know you do. Oh, I'll get that. Max, come in. Oh, I'm sorry to call and announce. I, I wondered if it was all right to say hello to the children. You know Margie, don't you? Hello. Oh, hello. I should be getting back. Get out of your way. Thanks for calling round. Oh, don't mention it. Um, if you need anything, don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, well, yeah. thanks very much. Well, just for one minute there, I, I thought you were pleased to see me. Good timing for once in your life. See yourself out. What are you thinking? I really how happy I feel. Not missing Dr. Darren. What makes you ask that? Well, the two of you were looking very much in love at one point. I was on the rebound. It's never going to amount to anything. Wasn't it weird sleeping with him, having been friends for so long? Yeah, it was a bit. I suppose all the alcohol helped. I'm surprised nothing ever happened before. I was with you. No, before that. Because I never fancied him. It was a mistake. It should never have happened. He was a shoulder to cry on, that's all. I'm glad to hear you say it. Was he good in bed? <laughs> what, better than me? Hmm. We should get up. Why? We can't stay here all day. I wouldn't complain. It's not often I get the day off. I feel like I should be doing something. In the mood of company? Yeah, maybe. I just feel like we should be celebrating. Letting everyone know we're back together. We could get um, a few people over later, have a few drinks, bite to eat. Are you volunteering to cook? Oh, we could always get a takeaway. <laughs> Who are you thinking of asking? I don't know. What about Nathan and his bit of rough? She's called Jackie. She's not a bit of rough. Or we could always invite Dr Darren. Just to show there's no hard feelings. You sure you're feeling up to it? Yeah, I haven't been feeling this good in ages. Look, to be perfectly honest, I'm, I'm not really in the mood. Why don't we just go out and get a meal, just the two of us? Yeah, it's fine by me. Or we could just stay here, do a John and Yoko and have our second honeymoon in bed. I don't understand. What's the point of having them in a crash all the way over in Chester? Because 
Lisa suggested it. I didn't have many options. Sh they should be here. I've only just got out of hospital. I'm not in a fit state to look after them yet. I'm not having a go at you. All I'm saying is, surely it must be hard spending all that time apart from them. Of course it is. Abandoning children doesn't come naturally to most people. I haven't come here to go over all that again. I'm simply offering you my help and support. It's as simple as that. Oh, go home, Max. If you want to see the children, they have to come back next week. I know Lisa thinks I'm a waste of space. She's not alone in her thinking, believe me. What's the point of forking out all that money for a creche when I could be looking after them? Well, it's very touching, but I'd hate to get in the way of your womanising. Please, Susanna, if you won't do it for me, then do it for the children. They've had enough confusion in their lives. You think it's a bit late in the day for showing concern for their welfare, hmm? No, I don't. I understand how you feel about me, but why cut your nose off to spite your face? What makes more sense? To be totally separated from them while they stay in Chester, or to have them here with you and let me do all the work? You know I'm right. Cheers, Vonnie. Let us know if you hear anything, eh? All right. Ta-ra. Still no sign of him? She hasn't heard a thing from either of them. Well, you'll get in touch. I can't win, miss. When he's here, I spend half my life worrying about him, and when he's away, it's even worse. He'll be all right. How can you say that after what happened here last week? We're lucky nobody was killed. Oh. Why can't he have a mind of his own, eh? I think if Jerome told him to jump off the edge of a cliff, he'd probably do it. This might be hard for you, mate, but he's 18 years old. Now, you can't tell him what he can or can't do. Yeah, he proved that by walking out of here again. Well, he'll turn up with his tail between his legs eventually. That's what he does in the meantime that worries me, mate. You been stood up? So, sort of. I was supposed to be meeting me mate, but she hasn't turned up. I forgot. All right. I thought you were on a date or something, the way you were knocking back those vodkas. Oh, well, you only live once, don't you? See ya. Ta da. Somebody's on the slippery slope. You are? Nicky Shadwick, drinking vodka in the afternoon. I think I would be if I was here. Yeah, I suppose so. So, what do you reckon then? I think it's absolutely sickening. How do you mean? Well, it's just not fair. Your Jackie's only a year older than me, and she's opening another business. There's me skivvying round after that slimy fella of hers. Life is just not fair. Well, at least you've got Ryan. Have I? <sighs> Should you not be at work? Yeah, I'll go in a minute. I don't know. You people with jobs don't know you're born. Any luck? What do you think? You'd be a waste of time. Something will turn up. So everyone keeps telling me. I must have sent off 15 applications before I went to Dublin and I haven't had a single reply. Not one. Do you want to hear a bit of gossip to cheer you up? Who's it about? <laughs> Greg Shadwick. Oh, do you not think it's a bit sick to be spreading gossip about dead people? Well, all right, then. I won't tell you. Now, go on. You'll never guess who he was knocking off before he died. What? Y you mean he was having an affair? Yeah. Katie told me. Apparently everyone knows. Well, except his wife. Go on, who with? Guess. Oh, I'm not in the mood for games, just tell me. <laughs> Susanna from next door. Honest to God. All right, I'll see you outside motor. It's about five. All right, see you later. Don't be late, chap. Look at that. And he called round to Susanna's to give her the ears back. Forgot all about it. Missed my hair day. That's a nice gap, though. Did you? She knows exactly what we're going through. She's been through it herself. Has she? Hey, that husband of hers called round just as I was leaving. Wonder if they get back together again. So no. No, for her sake, they don't. Mind you, she must get lonely. She's been on her own for ages. And I know she can be a right snossy cow, but you know, sometimes I really feel sorry for her, you know. Mum, I'm going to go and get a bath. I'm meeting Bernie in town for a drink later. Be the fella after the van. Stace me. I love a fair. Oh, uh, put it near the radiator, it'll dry quicker. 
See, I've already proved I can be quite useful. Well, they did say at the hospital I shouldn't be lifting things. I could get used to you being an unpaid skivvy for a few weeks. I take that as a yes. I suppose so. But don't be thinking you've got a foot back in the door again. I wouldn't let you move back in here in a million years. I'm only doing this because I miss the children so much. I swear to you, you won't regret it. I think I recall you saying that before. I've never stopped caring for you. You had a funny way of showing it. When I saw you lying in that hospital, I, I can't tell you how frightened I was. I thought I'd lose you forever. You lost me a long time ago. I know we'll never get back together again, but we should try and make an effort to be civil with each other, for the children's sake, if nothing else. Stop bleating, Max. I've already told you you can look after them. I'll phone Lisa, let her know. Thank you. I'll see myself out. Desperate, but I'm not stupid. Where have you been? Oh, I'm sorry. My ears are healing slowly, but the healing itself's hardly improved at all. Ideally, I want to be out by Christmas. What if I can't get the money together by then? Then it's hard luck. A man's just got to look good, head to toe in style. He's got to have it, and he'll get it next on four. She'd normally phone, at least. Do you know if she comes to yours? You let me know. Yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah, but you can't help but worry, can you, Trey? Anyway, I'll let you go, love. Yeah. Yeah, all right, Tra. She spend as much time at the job centre as he does down those stupid museums. At least to get him out from underneath your feet. Yeah, but you'd think he was on his holidays the way he's carrying on. And those soft girl greens do all kinds of double shifts just to keep our heads above water. Well, it's still early days yet. Something will turn up. Yeah, but he's being all picky and choosy, isn't he? I mean, he may be walking around thinking he's the big I am, but you've got to remember he didn't even pass his 11 plus, you know, never mind anything else. And don't forget, he's still quite happily been teaching if you hadn't have blown him up. How can I forget when I keep getting reminded every five minutes? I'm sorry, I wasn't having a go. Look, we can go around in circles forever, can't we, trying to find who's to blame, but it's not going to get us anywhere. We're still going to be stuck in the same boat. I suppose so. Look, Lens, I just want him to get a job, love. Any job. Apart from working in your club, that is. Oh, don't worry. There's not much chance of that. I mean, I don't think he'd want to work there. Why? Not eyebrow enough for him. Those forged certificates really went to his head. Hey, I'm going to need someone to look after Carly once the club opens. And it's half term next week. I could give him a few bob for doing that. Half I'll be glad of the break. Let's see, you can't pay your own mum and dad to take care of the grandchild. <laughs> Why not? I'd be glad of the help, mum, and every penny counts. Hey, I was going to get great grannies to do the garden next door as well. Could always cancel them and see if my dad fancies, don't he? Oh, yeah, why not? I mean, he's always taken such great pride in ours. Has <laughs> <laughs> Brian got off to Scotland yet? Yeah, first thing this morning. Oh, right, I'll 
What am I to first say, Charlie, before they went? It'll probably give you a call tonight. Yeah, plus if he's not too busy enjoying himself with that Abby one. He's gone to see Leah, not her. Yeah, so he says. So why would he want to look at anyone else when he's got you? Flash, you'll get you everywhere. Look, there's really nothing to worry about. It's not like they're ever going out with each other. It was just, well, a holiday romance. Yeah, and now he's on holiday up there in Scotland. How can I be sure they're not going to carry on where they left off? Because I know he wouldn't. It's just so weird. I've really thoughts going round in my head. I don't know why he doesn't just come clean with me, Mum and Dad. He's going to have to tell them one day. Yeah. He's got a habit of running away from his problems, hasn't he? That's why he ends up in this mess in the first place. I'll have to go. See Dan's back. I'll see you later. Yeah. See you, Katie. to Susanna, see how she is. Oh, good. I thought I might pop over and maybe I want to talk to you both about a few things. Oh, well, it's a social call, not business. Oh. Could anyone spare some change for the homeless, please? You are? Haven't you heard? We've got to move out while they redevelop the flat. Everyone? No, apparently they're just starting on the end, too. Oh, thank God for that. The last thing I need right now is to move house. So are they sorting out with somewhere else? Well, they're obliged to cover the rent on a new place, so we'll have to look for somewhere. It'll only be for a few months, but I really could have done without the hassle. I am. Um... I might be able to help your house. Oh, how? Well, I've got a place over on the close and hardly ever there. It's just lying empty most of the time. You don't miss a trick, do you? So, uh, do you think you might be interested? That yeah, sounds promising. Is that a yes? Well, I'd have to speak to Darren first, but uh, I can't imagine there being any problems. The easier, the better for both of us. Well, get me number off Jackie and uh, you could arrange to come round and have a look, see what you think. I will. Thanks very much. Don't mention it. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Oh, it sounds perfect. And what about having Cruella Corker for a landlady? It's going to be a nightmare. Yeah, it'll only be for a few months. I mean, I can just thrash out a quick agreement, cover my back. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. An accident? Oh! Uh, well, it uh, wasn't an accident as such, you know. Um, me and Mick were walking home from work one night and we got beaten up. And, uh, well, to cut a very long story short, um, I got it across the head and I've hardly been able to hear a thing since. Good Lord. I really don't know what to say. I'm sorry, Mr Moore, you really are going to have to... Oh, um, were the culprits apprehended? You're joking, aren't you? <sighs> totally devastating for you. Oh, don't worry, I'm over the worst of it now, you know. I'm hoping that they'll be able to tell me today when I'll be completely back to normal, you know. So what are you doing here, anyway? Oh, I, I'm here in a, a charitable capacity. I'm a hospital visitor. Yes, one of my many roles as a member of the Salvation Army. Uh, are you here alone? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, it's just a routine appointment, you know. Um, I'll be as right as rain before I know it. Wasn't there anyone who could come with you? Well, Mick's doing something, and Tim's at his mum's, so... Uh, I don't mind being on my own. You don't have to tell me what it's like to have no close family, no loved ones to, well, help you through the difficult times. No, don't get me wrong, I've got loads of mates. Oh, I'm sure you have, Mr Sweeney. But where are they now, in your hour of need? Stop it, will you? Don't have me slashing me wrists the way you're going on. My apologies. I, I do have a tendency to drift off into the dark side sometimes. Don't you fret, Mr Sweeney. I'm here now. I'll, uh, I'll sit. I'll keep you company. Oh, oh, no, no, no. No, you're all right. No, um, they'll be calling me in soon anyway. Um, no, no, I, as I say, I don't mind being on my own. Oh, no, I, I wouldn't dream of it. <clears throat> Could I tempt you with a pear drop? I can't tell you how awful it was. You just sat there going on and on. Greg this, Greg that. I didn't know where to put myself. I can imagine. My first reaction when I opened the front door was that she must have found out. Oh, my God, you must have died. Oh, I don't know how I coped. Just sitting there offering a sympathy. Oh, she ever found out. Well, she won't. I mean, who's going to tell her? Enough people know. Yeah, but there's nobody who's going to actually say anything. They wouldn't want to obsess her anymore. I really think she'd kill me. I really do. Don't even go there. She told me this tale about how when she and Greg were young and went to this nightclub, she actually broke the nose of some poor girl because she asked him the time. <laughs> You're joking. No, it's not funny. I've never been so relieved to see Max in my entire life. Max was here. 
We called round to see the children. He doesn't give up, does he? I hope he told him where to go. Well, he's talked me into letting him look after the children till I'm feeling up to it. He's what? Well, it's like he said, why pay a fortune for a creche in Chester when they could be with their father? And what kind of a father has he been so far? Well, I know all that, but at least I'll get to see more of the children, and that's the most important thing. So he's going to be mind in the mirror? Well, some days. And will he be staying the night and all? Oh, come on. I may be desperate, but I'm not stupid. And where is he now? Well, I don't know. He's picking the children up from Lisa's tomorrow. Are you sure you've done the right thing? You know what he's like. Once he has wormed his way back in again, he'll be a mass at a time before he's back in your bed. Jackie, give me some credit. Oh, that'd be Lindsay. She said she'd probably call round. Oh. Where have you been? Oh, I'm sorry. So you should be. I have been out of my mind with worry. I stayed at Bernie's cousins. Till this time, you could have phoned. Mum, I've said I'm sorry, haven't I? <sighs> Look at the stays of you we've been drinking. Oh, Mum, please, please don't go on. I feel terrible. Babe, I don't mean to go on. I have just been absolutely worried sick about you. I thought something had happened to you. Hey, I've just seen Nicky Shadwick going into her. She should have seen the stays of her. She could hardly walk. She was drunk. Oh, she looked absolutely rotten. Oh, it's only five o'clock. she better watch herself. Oh, must be hard for her, though, mustn't it? Knowing everything that went on and having to keep it a secret from her mum. Anyone mind if we change the subject? Oh, I'm sorry, Susanna. I shouldn't have said that. How's the club getting along? Fine. Fine. Nothing can faze me now. So what was it you wanted to see us about? Well, I know I've already mentioned it, but I've had time to think, and I really think we should change the name of it. Sally. Well, it might not be important to you, but it is to me. Any ideas what to? Well, no. But anything's got to be better than the Millennium Club. Fine by me. Oh, and me. <laughs> is that it? I was half expecting to have a big battle on my hands. Well, if we're all agreed, we'll have to find some time to get our heads together and come up with something. Look, if I'm going to be completely honest, I really couldn't care less what it's called. <laughs> what kind of attitude is that? Well, I'm not being funny, but I don't intend to be involved for much longer anyway. I meant what I said. I want to sell my share. But why? Because I've got the new wine shop to look after, not to mention the bar. I just want to concentrate on those. And where will that leave us? Don't panic. I'm not saying I'm going right now. I'll stick it out for a while, wait till it's up and running. But ideally, I want to be out by Christmas. What if I can't get the money together by then? Then <laughs> it's hard luck. I'll just have to sell my share to someone else. Do you feel any better? No, not really. Why well, should you let yourself get into this state, Nick? Maybe you're like a dream, but not this, love. I'm sorry, Mum. I'm really sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's all right, you're home now. But it's just not fair. I think this time last year, just starting university, world at your feet. Couldn't have come at a worse time. I mean, like, I haven't got enough on my plate already. Don't be taking out on me just because you've been thrown out of your flat. I haven't been thrown out. It's just a temporary situation. To think that I never even wanted to move in here in the first place. Well, I can't believe it's been a year now. A year? Is that all? <laughs> Feels like longer. I know. And who'd have thought we'd have become such close friends in such a short space of time? Maybe it's destiny telling you it's about time to start thinking about leaving Liverpool altogether, make a fresh start somewhere else. Oh, no, you don't get rid of me that easily. In fact, I'm just on my way to see Darren about renting uh, Lindsay Corkhill's place on the close. Oh. So don't worry. I'll still only be a stone's throw away. We've got to start meeting like this. Oh, thank God. I'm out of that place today. as now I've dragged. I've been sent out to do some shopping by my mum. Have you heard anything of Ryan yet? No. 
It's obviously too busy living it up in Edinburgh. Do you fancy a drink? Biscuit. My treat? I can't. Oh, go on, just one. I'll do with somebody to have a moan Well, seeing as you put it like that, I could do with some company myself. I'm bored, Bridget. After you. Is there nothing we can say to make you change your mind? No, there isn't. But why'd you have to pack it in so soon? Couldn't you at least stick it out for another year? You might feel differently then. And at least it'll give me time to try and raise the money. <laughs> you're so transparent, it's hysterical. You make out that you're all concerned for me, when all you really care about is whether you'll be able to get the money together or not. And what's wrong with that? You know how much I've put into this club. Yeah, and there's the perfect opportunity for you to own an even bigger stake in it. And I'm expected to raise that kind of money in less than three months. Well, you could always do what you did last time. Go and hold up a couple of gangsters at gunpoint. Another coffee, Lindsay? I better get off. I'll see myself, folks. <clears throat> Come on. Now, in your own time, I want you to tell me all about it, Mr. Sweeney. I'd really convinced myself I was on the mend that things were improving. And aren't they? <sighs> My ears are healing slowly, but the healing itself's hardly improved at all. <sighs> I mean, I'm no better off now than when I was when it first happened. I, I can understand how, how disappointed you must be feeling, but at the end of the day, you have to be grateful for what you have got. No. Just think of all my friends in here who are terminally ill. Mr. Sweeney, they would give their right arm to swap places with you. And that really doesn't make me feel any better right now. I've been going around for weeks convincing myself that I'm getting better. I mean, what if I never do? Hey? What if I'm like this forever? I, mean, I don't think I could cope with it. I really don't. Now, Mr. Sweeney, you have got to remain positive. Well, that's easy for you to say. When's your next appointment? Hmm? Eight weeks. Yes. So you will have come on leaps and bounds by then. Don't count on it. Slowly but surely. It's the only way to do it. Come on, I'll, I'll drive you home. No, no, thanks. I'll be all right. I'll... Mr Sweeney, please, don't offend me. The very least I can do is make sure you get home in one piece. I know she thinks I'm only half of myself, but that's not true. I'm just worried that she's dropping out for all the wrong reasons. Oh, come on. Jackie doesn't take these decisions lightly. She knows her own mind. I'm not saying she doesn't. But you've got to admit, she has changed since she started seeing that Nathan. Well, I suppose she has a bit. A bit? She used to be the driving force behind the club, and now she's thinking of selling up altogether. Well, I certainly hope her decision hasn't been influenced by him. I remember Max persuading me to take a back seat in the restaurant, and look where that got me. Exactly. I think she'll end up regretting it one day. He may be right, but one thing's for certain. What's that? Jackie's not going to change her mind. There's one thing she never does, and that's back down. Unfortunately. Right. I'd better get going. Can't be sitting round here gossiping all day, as much as I'd like to. It's been nice seeing you anyway. And you. I hope you're coming over to the open on a week on Monday. I'm not sure I'll be feeling up to it. Oh, come on. Even if it's only for an hour or something. I won't promise. Well, you can't let what happened last time put you off. Just, I'm not sure I can face being in there. I, I, I'd be completely on edge. And so will everyone else. I'd be surprised if anyone turns up after all the publicity we had last time. That's why we're going to need all the support we can get. And a new name. I'll let you know nearer the time. At least think about it. See ya. There's no coffee left, love. Do a nice cup of tea? Oh, no time, one more ice. I'll go over to the garage and get some. How are you feeling now? Buff. Oh, me. Why'd you do it? Do what? Get yourself into such a state. I mean, you know I've got nothing against you going out and having a good time, but when you come home like this, is there any wonder I worry? Well, we should come and meet some of the people at the uni. They're like this most days. Yeah, but they're not trying to blank things out, are they? 
I'm not trying to blank things out. Oh, come on, love. You know that's not true. <laughs> don't cry. I'm sorry, Mum. You don't have to apologise. You know, I just wish you'd talk to me, you know, when you're feeling down instead of going out and drinking. Sometimes it's the only way I know how to make myself feel better. Now, you know that's not true. We've all been devastated these past few weeks, but we've got to be strong. You know, we're all missing your dad and Jason. You're not the only one going through this. I'm the only one who's been raped, though. I'm the only one who's had to sit in some courtroom and watch while a fellow who didn't walk free. Is that what this is all really about, that, that Luke Musgrove? It's different with me, Dad and Jason. I know what happened to them was terrible, but I know I'll be able to come to terms with that one day. I don't think I'll ever be able to accept what he did to me. Even think about leaving you, love, when you're in this state. I've tried to be strong, Mum. I've tried to put on a brave face and get on with me life, but sometimes it just seems impossible. <laughs> oh, come here. Shh, shh. Come. Shh. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Just may have second thought. <sighs> I don't think so. Well, it's not just about money. I mean, Jackie's the only one who's got the real experience of running bars and clubs and. Oh, I hate to admit it, but I don't think I can cope without her. I've just spoken to my flatmate. Looks like we could be moving into your place ASAP. Oh, brilliant. If it's okay with you, we'll have to arrange a convenient time to come round and check the place out. Come to some agreement about the rent? Oh, give us a call any time. Jackie's got me mobile. I'll be in touch then. What was all that about? Well, they've had to move out the flat. Well, the new developers are doing them all up. I've said they could rent my place for a few months. Well, that's if it's all right with you. Oh, let's face it. Me and Kylie spend most of our time at Shelley's or yours anyway. Oh, I suppose it makes sense, doesn't it? Especially if we're going to be looking after Kylie once the club's up and running. Oh, so you don't mind if we move back in for a few months? It's like you said, isn't it? You never really moved out, did you? Oh, I'd be glad of the money. Hey, we'll be able to pay you some rent. Oh. Hey, listen, you want to make sure you charge them more than the going rate, you know? He's a solicitor, isn't he? Mm -hmm. The other one's a doctor. Must be worth a few bucks. I don't know what they're letting themselves in for, do they move next door to us? <laughs> oh, I love how you're getting on. Um, I better get back in. She didn't look too happy, did she? Mm. Would you? Hey, I saw Nikki Shadwick earlier. She looked paralytic. And we thought we had problems in there. Yeah. See you, look. See you. All right, well, I'd better go and get me my chaffin. I should be wondering what's happened to me. Yeah, well, I'll walk over with you. Get myself a sad little frozen meal for one. I've got a thing in. Look, I'm sorry if I've bought the leg off yet. Oh, you haven't. You must think I'm a paranoid cow. Oh, don't worry. I know what it's like when you're really in somewhere. I suppose I'm just scared he's going to turn out like all the others, that's all. He won't. He's never cheating you. He's not that kind of guy. And you really tell me if he won't. <laughs> ah, good news. Looks like I've managed to secure that property on the close. That was all amazingly straightforward, wasn't it? Yeah, great. Made it for you. Why is it that some people always seem to land on the feet? Hey, I think you're asking the wrong person. I think one of those faces, though, you would not get tired of it. <laughs> I think you fancy me. You must be joking. Admit it. The only reason you're going out with our Ryan is because he knocked you back. Hey, I'll kill you! <laughs> oh. Oh. Might have known it would be you. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll buy you another one. You know, I don't even know why you've got the nerve to walk these streets. Oh, not all this again. Oh, Nikki is an absolute wreck because of you. She's just come home, she's in such a state, she can't even stand up. Look, I'm sorry about that, but it's got nothing to do with me. I was found not guilty. Oh, come on, getting you any better. What have I done? <sighs> don't you realise what he's done? He drugged and he raped my daughter. You shouldn't be near him. He'll probably do the same to you. I don't have to listen to this. Don't you dare walk away from me when I'm talking to you. What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. Because if you're not defending a rapist, my daughter's life is in ruins. Margie, why don't you just go home, eh? You're just upsetting yourself. How are you protecting him? Like his lot protected him. Like his family protected him. I'll tell you what, I don't know what's up with your mum and dad, but they must be as thick as two short blanks if they think that you're innocent. Just leave my mum and dad out of this. It's got nothing to do with them. <gasps> oh, it's got nothing to do with them. Oh, so they're really proud that they brought a rapist into the world, because I'll tell you what, you need you to be my son and to drown you at birth. That's enough. Look, um, I think I'll leave you to it. 
Has it never crossed your mind that maybe Nikki's drinking because she just lost her brother and father? Don't! Don't you even bring their names into this! The last year of their lives was made in absolute misery because of you! Oh, and does that explain why your husband wasn't two seconds jumping into bed with Susanna Marcy? Hello? Hello? Margie? Hello? Nikki, wake up! For God's sake, wake up! She was with your dad when the bombs went off. Here yeah, next door, that's Susanna Morrissey. She was with your dad when the bombs went off. I told her. You knew. Your dad was carrying on and you knew.
And half a pint of cream tomorrow, please. All right, love. Thanks. Did you hear a phone in that bed? Did you? I think you should go. I'm not going anywhere. Not till you tell me what was going on between you and my husband! Well, nothing was going on. Don't be lying, you little bitch! Tell me the truth! Well, can't we go downstairs? I'm not going anywhere till you tell me the truth. It, it didn't mean anything. No, I'll decide that. When did it start? He loved you, not me. When did it start? Look, why don't we go downstairs and talk, and I'll make us some coffee. No, you'll sit down! <laughs> and you'll tell me when? About March. Liar. No, I'm not lying! He was working on your house before Christmas. He was even here on Christmas Day. Well, I was pregnant in the start to later. When? In... in February, March. Don't lie. It must have been earlier. He was, like, flying around muck with you. He was he, he was even with you when you had your baby. No, it was just a coincidence. He even took you out to buy a pram. It's the baby is. No! Tell me the truth! Emma is Max's baby. She is. You've got the wrong end of the stick. I mean, it's, fu it's funny your husband walking out on you just before Christmas. Did he find out about you and Greg? Did he find out about the baby? Margie, you've got it all wrong. I had an affair with Greg, but he is not Emma's father. I'd swear on a life he isn't. I threw Max out. He didn't leave. I threw him out because I found out he betrayed me with somebody who was supposed to be my best friend. And you jumped into bed with my husband. I told you I was pregnant through Christmas. Oh, he wasn't like that. What was it like? Oh, please, I'm not comfortable here. Let's go downstairs. Oh, it Someone must have started it. Was it you? Was it Greg? I'm not sure. Don't lie! Tell me, cos I want to know the truth and I want to know everything. I was... I was very uh, down after Max left. It, you know, it wasn't a, a, a brilliant pregnancy and... See, uh, Greg was... He was very supportive. He started... Um, Calling round for a talk. Who stars are they? He was very upset about what happened to Nicky. Oh. So you dragged him in your bed to kiss it all better? Well, me and the kids were going through hell. No, I didn't do that. It started later. You know, after Emma was born. You know, the, the, the fact that he was there at the birth, it, it brought us closer. At first, we were just friends. Friends? And when did you friends first do it? When did you first screw my husband? I can't remember the exact date. Where was it? Is it in here? Yes. But it wasn't like you think. We weren't in love. He always loved you. Then why did he carry on with you then? You led him on, didn't you? 
It wasn't like that, honestly. Greg was down and upset over Nikki, and I was finding it hard to cope with the babies. Oh, you know, that's a nanny, for God's sake. You know, Katrina? She found out, didn't she? And that's why she went waiting for you. I didn't want to cause any trouble. Then why did you start it? Neither of us started it. It was a... a mutual attraction. I enjoyed Greg's company, and, and then he enjoyed mine. It, it just happened. We were together. We were married for 23 years. He never once looked at another woman. So why would he sleep with you? If you didn't, Stasi? Please, let's go downstairs. Just you answer the question. We needed each other. You needed him. You wanted him more like he had me. He had me. He didn't. What are you trying to say? Your time was taken up with Nicky and the family. You didn't have time for him. Do you dare say that? Do you dare say that? I love Greg. Well, that's what he told me. Well, he lied to you. He never went near me for months and months. I practically had to force him into bed with me. And now I know why. He got me a nightie like this. Did you get a few? I found it in his drawer in our bedroom. And I wondered why it was there. But you know what I think? I think it was for you. And he realised that I'd found it. So we got you another one because you gave him the first one to me. Am I right? I don't know. Well, it had to be something like that. He didn't do things like that for me. He never bought me stuff like this. But look, now we've both got one. God, why didn't I notice what was going on? I mean, he was always over here doing stupid piddling little jobs and you, you were forever knocking on our door. <laughs> no wonder he get me at arm's length. Why bother with me when he's got some, some classy piece next door? Don't be so hard on yourself. Let's go down and talk it through. And you patronise me, you, you cheeky cow! Please! I'm trying to explain. It was a... It was a combination of circumstances. All the upset over Nicky, uh, me trying to start a new business, look after the children, Greg and me. We were... We were vulnerable to something happening. He needed me to take him away from his family problems, and I needed him to take me away from my own. You're just... You're sounding like some stupid article in a magazine. You're trying to make it sound normal. You took my husband to bed time after time, and you didn't give a damn about me and my family. We used each other. You used him for sex. And for them to pay for you to stay in hotels because I've seen all the credit card stuff. We used each other. That's the truth of it. It shouldn't have happened. I never set out to steal him from you. I never wanted him to leave you. I just... I just enjoyed him. And we went to bed. I didn't love him. He loved you. It's all your fault. Nothing would have happened if you'd have just left him alone! Can't you understand? No one's to blame it. It just happened. And now he's dead. And Jason is dead! You were with him when he was killed, wasn't you? <sighs> yes. What happened? Don't lie. Just looking about. You meant not changing rooms. To have sex with him, didn't you? Was it your idea? I don't know. It just happened. You killed him. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Whoever let that bomb off killed him. No, you killed him. You've got to get this into perspective. Do you dare speak to me like that? If he hadn't have been carrying on with you, he wouldn't have been in those changing rooms. He wouldn't have even been invited to your big opening night party. We didn't know a bomb was going to go off. But it did. And my only son was killed. You can't blame me for that. If he hadn't have been with you in that club, my son wouldn't have had to go in to rescue his father. 
It's all down to you, isn't it? I have lost my son because you were carrying on with my husband. How do you feel about that? I didn't let off a ball. Why don't you care? You don't care to kill in a car crash. You should know what it's like to lose a child. But you just don't care. Don't you bring my children into this. Get out of here. Dizzy little cow. Help, help, my son. Come in. <laughs> Mom? Police, you understand? Come on, Mom. Come on. If it wasn't for her, my son would still be with me. Come on, Mom. Come on, I can't believe what you've just done. It's all her fault. Everything. Please, Mom, just leave it. Just take a deep breath. You're safe now. I was in the bedroom. She let herself in. I, I thought she was going to kill me. I, I tried to escape, but she, she brought me back in and I hit her, but she was too strong. I, oh, I couldn't God, fight her. Phone. I couldn't breathe. Look, it's all right. Don't I try to talk. Her. Come on. Come and lie down, all right? What are you doing? Mom. Oh, you can't do that, please. After all these years. We just stop it. You could have killed Susanna Monacy tonight. Oh, I would have done. She can still get the police after what you've did. Oh, Mum, you just stop it, please. It's all I've got left of me, Dad. Yeah. And if he was here now, I'd kill him myself. If he hadn't gone too early, our Jason would still be with us. It wasn't even here. It's your father killed his own son. That's what your father's done to me. Right, I've, um... I've sorted out the bedroom for you, OK? Woman, she is insane. Don't you think I could have done the same when I found out about your adultery? Certainly not. At least you were... civilised. Not inside. I wanted to hurt her, but I was too hurt myself. And I'm a different woman from Margie, too. And she has lost her husband and son. That was happenstance. Look, the bomb killed Greg and his son. What concerns me more than anything else is you were nearly killed tonight. She couldn't help it. Why do you give her the benefit of the doubt? She came into your own home. She attacked you. We should report her to the police. By right, she should be arrested right now as we speak. I don't want that. She wanted to know why. She wanted to know all the tiny details about me and Greg. Did you tell her? <laughs> Some of it. And she mentioned Matthew and Em. I was shouted at her and then she got violent. She thought it was all my fault and I started it with Greg. Right, that's enough. I, I, I think you should get some rest now. 
I should be over there now, warning her off. No, I don't want you approaching Margie, and I certainly don't want the police involved. Aren't you frightened of her? No. Margie's angry and upset. She's not the manor park strangler. So you don't think she'll be back, then? If she does come back, it'll only be for more sordid details. Oh, you've got to understand her hurt, because by God, I do. I don't understand this instant forgiveness. She tried to strangle you. She would have strangled you if I hadn't shown up. Well, at least we've learnt something. Affairs. Do you know, I really thought I could do it. I wasn't emotionally involved. I thought I could get away with it. A perfect, victimless case of adultery. And look what happened. Greg and Jason are dead. You mustn't think like that. Nobody blames you. I was wrong. Adultery is wrong. Yes, I am to blame. Or maybe you're to blame. Me? Well, if I hadn't thrown you out last Christmas, would I have started an affair with Greg Shadwick? Would we have been in that part of the club when the bombs went off, huh? Or maybe it's your fault. What well, is she just call the police? Three marks on her neck, won't they? And they will arrest me. What will they do me for? Something Vesa. Mum, she won't phone the police. Yeah, but what if Vesa? Really, Vesa? She was all right. Max is with her now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, she'll be fine. Now she's got her ex back in town. Here, give me that. <laughs> Makes you laugh, doesn't it? Fancy Bella's been dead five minutes and she's moving the husband back in. <laughs> Give us that. I'll put it in the drawer with the others. I don't want it. Oh, don't be soft. But it doesn't mean anything. It was a sham from beginning to end. All those vows we made. They were to honour each other. To love and to cherish. It was all lies. Every last word of it. Mum, you don't mean that. After all those years, 23 years ago this February it was, that was when we first met. Yeah? Yeah. Outside the toilets in the she club, you had red flares on and purple t-shirts. Just big shaggy sheepskin coats. In the club? Those was the bee's knees. I almost had the first night that you scoped off. Oh, no. No. When I went with my mate, Tabby. It was a few weeks before he finally saw the lace. Realised he'd gone off with the wrong girl. It wasn't like that for me, though. I knew from day one. And the minute I saw him standing there, sweating, that stupid girl. I'm not upset. I'm angry. Do you need anything else? I just want to sleep. OK. Oh, I've got to put the bolts and no, 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 the doors. No, 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 it's all right, it's all right. I'll do it, OK? She's not going to get back in here again. Keys or no keys. Yeah, but I've got to let you out before I lock up. No. <laughs> For God's sake. Do you think I'd leave you on your own after all this? That I'll do it. I'll be here. There's no need. Yes, there certainly is. All this tonight, it wouldn't have happened if I'd have been here. If you and me sat and told me to go. Oh, not that again. I'm sorry, but Emma and Harry, they could have been here when she turned up. She could come looking for trouble again. No, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter what you think of me. Faye, anything. I'm staying here, OK? Don't get too settled. It is only temporary. My dad had an affair with Susanna Morrissey. Don't you dare give me your sympathy! Yeah, Jess, why didn't you stop him? I tried. I want to know if you love me. Oh, you did, Margie. <laughs>